What is going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday here at the TDR Trade Black Podcast. Last week had a ton of earnings, among other things related to Florida. A lot to dive into and process, but we're finishing, or should say, starting the week off strong here again. Another earnings week as Canopy Growth, which reported last week on Friday, is going to be here to join us to dive into some of these latest numbers and really what can investors expect next in some of the key markets that they're operating in. So with that, let's welcome in Anthony Varel here on a Tuesday. Good to see our things. How's it going? It's great. So it's, uh, it's nice to be in another earnings week. We knew we knew a week and a half ago we were entering a busy time of the schedule for this space. But uh, how's it feel now that we're 10 days in? Like it's been a lot of it's work, good. but productive. I like being busy. I like being right? busy and uh, right? keeping our finger on the pulse of what's going on. Yes. Keeping busy. And everybody knows the stock probably better more so than any other stock in the cannabis space. Canopy Growth. Let's welcome back in their CEO, David Klein. Good to see you. How are things? Thanks, are Great, guys. Good to see you as well. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, busy time, I would say, for the industry. Lots going on from the political front. Before we get into numbers, what's your take on this whole Washington play with the Trump administration, new administration getting play? A lot of people, you know, don't know what's going to happen next, you know, and whether or not, you know, policy of cannabis will be part of that framework for him. But there's other people that we've spoken to as well that say this is an economic standpoint. He's going to want to look at job creation and the actual opportunity that tax revenue creates. But your take on what you think the Trump administration will mean for cannabis. Yeah, look, I, I think it was very encouraging that the president elect, um, you know, came out uh, several a couple of months ago in favor of rescheduling, in favor of safe banking. I, I just think that takes a little bit of the pressure off of uh, everybody in the legislative branch when, branch when they're thinking about where, where this goes. You know, for us, um, look, we built, can, we built our, our infrastructure so that we uh, give our investors exposure to plant touching businesses while we're still traded on uh, US exchanges. I mean, that was the point of building infrastructure we did. We would love to see, you know, 280 u reform. We'd love to see safe banking, but, you know, we, we're really happy with the structure that we have, which allows us to participate in the U.S. market, irrespective of what happens uh, with the Trump administration. Yeah, I hear you there. Anthony, you brought up some points before, actually before we started recording, but getting kind of like the perspective of some of the executives at Constellation and what their view on all this is. Have you had any of those conversations with them? Yeah, look, I think every time there's a there's a there's a change, um, you know, at, 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 in president and you talk about tariffs and things at the border and you're an importer like Constellation is of, yeah. of yeah. beers from Mexico. Um, it's a it's a tough time. But I think, uh, you know, I sat I sat in a chair at Constellation in 2016 when we were last having these conversations and it, it, it worked out just fine. And I suspect the same thing, uh, the same thing will happen again. So. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of I don't know if it's a word, but punditry at the beginning of a presidential uh, a yes. term and all of that's going on right now. And, you know, usually usually things kind of go the way you think they will versus, you know, radical change. So so we'll we'll see. Good point. Time will tell. Right. Let's dive into your latest numbers. Q2 2025. Some of the positive stores and Bickle revenue actually increased 32 percent year over year. Everybody loves obviously this. And this is one of the business angles that you have that continues to perform well. Medical cannabis sales revenue grew 16 percent in Canada and 12 percent in, in, in international markets. Net revenue, it was down 9% Q quarter over quarter while margins improved across the board. So what do you think, I guess, attributed to the softness of the top line growth? Yeah, so I think there are a couple of things there. If you look at um, our top line on a, on a year over year basis, kind of excluding the businesses we had last year, which was like our, our um, skincare company. Um, so if you normalize for that, our top line was up uh, 3%, right? So, so not quite as soft as, uh, as, as the, the headline numbers would look. What, what we were doing now and what we've continued to do is we're focusing on the high margin areas. All of the, all of the areas that you mentioned that are growing are the highest margin areas of our business. Um, so yeah, you know, we're up 72% in Germany, 200% in Poland. And, you know, you gave the, the, the uh, Canadian medical number of, of 16% in the stores and pickle number 32. So, so the high margin components of our business are growing. We admit yeah. that there's some softness in the Canadian adult use market for us. Um, and it really is, you know, it's a, it's a more margin challenged market for us. We've, built our um, our supply chain now so that we have good margins. In fact, we had 
cash gross margins in the last quarter of, of 40, 44%. So, you know, good margins across our business. Um, and, and so now we've got all of these things working and the activity set for the next six months is really to drive growth in particular in Canadian adult use. And we've got a lot of cool things going that we think will help us there. Hmm. Speaking, speaking of driving with growth in the Canadian adult use market, I know that the medical the medical net revenue was up 16% while the adult use was down 24%, I think attributable to a disruption in the WANA supply chain. These numbers, the way that the give and takes going with medical and adult use, you'd mentioned that you prefer to allocate towards your high margin businesses. Is the softness that we're seeing in the adult use attributable to let's say consumer preference or are you allocating, are you allocating product into different channels and that channel just happened to be one of the ones that didn't have the surplus of product allocated yeah, so to look, it. it's our preference to to put product when available so when we didn't when we were short supply for wana we put it into the medical channel we didn't put it into the adult use okay. channel but look i don't want to hide behind that as an excuse we need to do better yeah. in canadian adult use and so we're mm -hmm. doing things like we're like wana is fully back in stock across canada now which is great we're, we're bringing um, some pre-roll innovation, which will be uh, in the market uh, for consumers over the next couple of weeks. Our initial orders uh, from the provincial boards have been like really strong, maybe one of our strongest kind of a, a uptake from an order standpoint uh, uh, in, a, in a long time. Um, you know, we, we've continued to, I think, drive some really good innovation in flour. So I and on top of that, we need to do a better job executing on kind of the day in and day out sales activity. And we've got some plans around that. Okay. So, you know, yeah, there, we're, there, it's an allocation story and we're going to keep doing that because that's how we're going to drive the right profitability and the cash flow for the business. But we, we, we have some work to do in Canadian adult use. And, you know, we're, we're, we're obsessing over that right now. Hmm. Yet yeah, we all understand the challenges that the Canadian adult use landscape can present right now. And I think a lot of investors that are out here right now, that's just like they're always pushing to say, like, what's next? You know, certain numbers I think they were hoping could be better related to this, you know, uh, endeavor or part of the business model for Canopy. But I always try to communicate to people there's a plan in place as to how you're pivoting, which is obviously CUSA. You know, if this is a company that was going to pride itself solely on adult use in cannabis in Canada, like what would you say still here in 2025 or to the, on the verge of 2025 are the biggest challenges that this market faces when it comes to rec in Canada? Yeah, I think it's still it's still the same thing. Like, I don't think the story's changed and it's probably the story in every market. Once you start to get price compression, um, the illicit market needs to be addressed. And, you know, we've we've heard some things out of uh, Ontario in particular about uh, trying to do some things to address the illicit market, but they need to do a lot more. Um, the excise tax is too high. If, you're, if we're not going to get rid of the illicit market, don't make me pay 40 cents on every dollar of 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 sales to um to to the tax uh, do you see that changing market. you see that changing at all i don't i don't see anything happening in the near term i'm optimistic that over time uh the, you know we'll move in the right direction remember the finance committee suggested making some changes to that as recently as a few months ago um but but yeah it's the market we live in but you know again i don't want to apologize for that either we figured out how to make yeah. money in this Canadian market. And I think that's going to translate for us figuring out how to make money as other markets compress, whether it's, you know, pick the state in, in the U.S. or, um, you know, pick the country yeah. internationally. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, this yeah. is the world we live in. And it, we need to recognize the reality that everyone feels happy the first couple of weeks after cannabis gets legalized. And then so many people are excited to be in the market. Every single market, we see the same thing happen. You end up with too much supply over time. You end up with uh, then price compression, product quality goes up because then consumers start to get choosy, which is good. You have to react to that. And, and, then, and then you have to make your business work. And Canada, we've been through most of that cycle. The last thing is we could use some help from the government on the illicit market and, and excise. But, you know, look, we, we know how to play this game and we're prepared to play it. And in you know in germany in australia in in you know in ohio like like pick the place we're ready to play yeah 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 speaking speaking of the canadian market as that market evolves and as you plan to grow sales and revenue in it what's the strategy is it you 
you leverage your established brands, focus on quality and price to the consumer, or are you also, let's say, A-B testing new brands, new products, um, bringing that, that those kind of, pulling those kind of levers in the market, and then let's say just uh, dedicating assets towards something that happens to work. And let's say gets it let, gets starts to scale with consumers like a, like an infused pre roll or new products and form factors to the categories. You look that's in a that's an astute setup because if you look at if you want to compete in flour, um, and, and you know our guys have have done the done the math on this. It's literally a perfect, uh, perfectly straight upward to the to the to the right curve between price and THC level. And so you have okay. to find something else to, and, and by the way, that, that's, a, that's a good business, um, but you have to be really aggressive on price and you have to make sure that your agricultural standards are such that you don't slip on THC level because you, you, you can bounce off the curve from one grow to the next and, and then you know, your, your, your products are, are struggling in the market. The better play is to find that differentiated kind of new thing, not new thing, but kind of better thing in the market. So we're working on NPD. We're, so in, in our Awana brand, for example, we're bringing a, what I'll call for now, a better for you um, a gummy to the market over the next couple of months. And, you know, we think that'll, that'll have, uh, that'll create interest uh, in the brand and you know, there'll be some consumers that'll, that'll think that's great. We're bringing in infused okay. pre-roll that, you know, again, we're, we're, um, uh, we haven't announced the name, but it's, 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 it's a strong player in, in the California market, that's that just uh, kind of does things differently from a from an infused pre roll standpoint. We're bringing that to the market in Canada. It'll be available to consumers over the next couple of weeks. And so, yeah, it's 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 getting your flower game right, executing on a day in and day out basis. But then, yeah, you need you need to have a couple of bangers come in, and then you need to to ride them when they do. Yeah. Yeah, we. Uh talk about this international market anthony and i were actually in a great conversation last week with the uh, ceo of and chairman of uh curly boris jordan who had highlighted some stuff we had the perception that germany is that key market for them but he highlighted to us uh the uk is actually very lucrative but more importantly poland which is where you guys operate in right now what's the most important thing that you can talk about that market that investors may not be aware of yeah, I think it's it's the 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 kind of the go to market approach there. Um, you're you're um, uh, this is probably a bad analogy, but it's more like selling to Quebec than it is to selling to Ontario. If you want to look at it from a Canadian standpoint, you need to get okay. you need to get kind of on the shelf with the with the government, and then uh, yeah. and then and then you get into the supply chain versus going out trying to you know compete door to door um, to try to get in dispensary by dispensary. Um, the, the, you know, the Poland, uh, uh, the Poland market is really strong. Our relationships there are very strong. Um, the economy is reasonably attractive. I mean, there, there's, there are a lot of reasons to like it, but I look, I think whether it's Poland or the UK, I think the point is there are a lot of really good markets, uh, in the, in, in the world. It's easy to get enamored with the, the, the latest kind of headline drop from a country or a state. Uh, it is. But but you know I think it's it it comes down to just you know really strong execution in 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 each of those markets and you know we've started to look and you guys maybe even uh, do this math as well you kind of look at profit pools by state by country and you know I still believe that the any most individual U S states probably have a larger profit pool than an entire country like Canada and and, and maybe even uh, like Great Britain given the um, yeah. Uh, given given the the you know what's currently legal there, but I think it's looking at those profit pools and figuring out how how you know you can play in those profit pools. And we think we're strong in Poland. We think we're well positioned in Germany. We think we're well positioned in some of the real states that matter in the U.S. And it's kind of yeah, it's kind of cherry picking your way through that that market landscape. Hmm. Speaking back on international, I know S and B is a big part of the portfolio. It's uh, double digit growth, strong growth in the category. Um, jurisdictionally, where is that growth coming from? Is it coming from North America? Is it coming from Europe? Um, is it kind of just growth on the entire footprint led by the Venti device and product innovation? Or where's uh, where's that coming from? It's really three things. So it's growth in Germany and the household penetration okay. in Germany is looking really attractive. But by the way, the German uh, household penetration is looking like the household penetration we arrived at in Australia. So it's not like, you yeah, know, okay. it's only happening in Germany because it's a German brand. 
what we need to do is we need to get that level of household penetration in the US because then the business would just like, you know, blow through the roof. Um, yeah. So so good performance in Germany, good performance in the US um, on the back of, you know, over the last couple of years, we've struggled with uh, distributors in the US distributors going to vape shops and so forth have been economically challenged, um, which which hurt yes. our business. We seem to, you know, we're going direct more. We've we've got smaller instead of having one or two big distributors. We have a wider base of distributors in the US. We're starting to sell directly into dispensaries and sell to MSOs. And look, it's a great it's a great product to have on the shelf um, in any dispensary, uh, you know, because it I think it, it it is that high end gives, you know, gives you a bit of that halo appeal when you walk into a dispensary. So um, so the US market's growing really well. And then the last point, which you mentioned, is the venti. You know, there's been there's, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's a it's a superior product and, um, you know, it's it's beginning to get the kind of growth that we had hoped to get out of the brand. Hmm. You talk about headlines, you know, two point six billion dollars is the medical market in Florida. And when you look at population, Germany's four times the size of that. You can get caught up on where this could go and some of the players that are involved in the German market. But realistically, if you could talk maybe a little bit more examples like how much are people become aware of what this medical program could present for the country when you visit there? Yeah, so I, I still think it's, um, you know, there was a there, there was a lot of, uh, you know, publicity in the U.S. In fact, you know, a lot of U.S. media made it seem like Germany legalized cannabis. What they did is they said it's not yes. a narcotic. So you, you still it's still medical cannabis. So it's, uh, you know, it's not it's not full up, you know, adult use, but um it's it's you know it's the the uh you know uh consumption lounges and so forth um present an opportunity for people to think about cannabis differently in in that country um and so you know i i think i think we're just getting started i know early on there was a lot of thinking that the market would uh would would grow like exponentially over the first couple of years and it's going to see really good growth i think it remains to be seen if it hits the numbers that people were speculating on in the first instance, which would make it one of the biggest cannabis markets in the world. But, you know, I think the thing that I've learned after five years, guys, is that there's always all of this optimism when a market opens and there's a view as to the, what the size of market's going to be and the profitability available there. And the reality is the projections are probably low, but but way too close. In. Like it's going to take five years longer than everybody thinks and the market's going to be one and a half times the size everyone thinks. And it's just we keep, I think, as an industry deluding ourselves that there's the next silver bullet, you know, the next market's going to open and it's, you know, it's going to, you know, trump everything else. And the reality is the next market's going to open and it's going to look like the last market that opened. But the great news is a new market opened, right, which is what we're right. fighting for as an industry. Good Correct. point. So you're so I'm assuming you're this, you're in the school of thought that consistent growth in this sector will win versus the expected moonshots of just going up and down. And with that, do you feel that the future of, let's say, cannabis markets in the United States are going to resemble California, Colorado and the likes of what we've seen as like the maturation curve? Um, of markets as they get older? Yeah, look, I've, I've uh, a couple of things. So um, I think the best model, um, the best model, you mentioned Constellation earlier, the best model is a brand like Modelo that nobody heard about 20 years ago. It's had 25 years of double digit growth. So, and it went from a brand nobody had ever heard of to the number one beer brand in the US. I think that's how you wanna run your business over time is you know you need consistent growth, consistent execution. And I've used California as the example. I think it's not going to be like Canada necessarily, where where prices are even more compressed, taxes are higher, and it's more difficult to operate in. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to be kind of the ease of which we operate in a state like New Jersey over the last year or so, where where prices are pretty yeah. high, margins are super high. I think it's going to look like California, and, and and you know we feel at Canopy that we're really well positioned to operate in those environments because you know. We've had to work in Canada for the, you know, for the last 10 years. Yeah, I think that's yeah, the big takeaway. I, 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 I tend to agree with you. And I mean, I know that a lot of us like to say that, that we like the limited license nature um, of these states, but I do think a true free market is, is what's going to happen in the future. Now, I could be very wrong, 
but I, I, I don't see any way around that unless it just stays highly regulated and fragmented like what we're seeing. And I just don't think that that's sustainable. Um, <clears throat> And, and you know what I, what I like about the California model, and again, it's not it's not you would like you would like a you know a, a limited license kind of seats to sale state. You can make a lot of money in it in the near term, but we 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 know that very few businesses operate that way. So over time, you know that it would get chipped away at even if it were the case. And you look at a market like California and a brand like Jetty, right? So Jetty um, has its own kind of carved out niche in solventless vapes and. They just keep growing year after year in the kind of better for you vapes. So they're OCAL certified. So all of the concerns about pesticides and chemicals, they've they've always made their brand, um, you know, kind of special and clean, you know, starting with solventless, then going to OCAL. They continue to do that, uh, you know, treat their business that way. And and that's how you build a brand. And you can see it. You can yeah, see it with Jetty. Right. You can look in the data and you see Jetty is not just growing in solventless, Jetty is growing in California. And and it's just a longer play than the, you called, you said moonshot, you don't get the moonshot, but it's how you create real lasting value for shareholders. Um, you just have to keep stringing quarters together. And, you know, yeah, I would, I would love to come in here someday and say we quadrupled our business this quarter, but like we want sustainable stuff because that's what's going to pay off for the investors in the long run. What did we learn last week, Anthony? Spend less on marketing dollars by making your brand really good, right? Yeah, I mean, which it's it was a it was an insightful line, but it makes a lot of common sense. The fact the quality of your product will help you drastically reduce marketing dollars because you don't have to sell it so hard, um, exactly. and you build brand evangelists. I can tell yeah. you with certainty, I know a lot of them in California. There's a lot of people that love Jetty. They only buy Jetty, and that's their brand. Yeah. And that's what they've built. Same thing with Wana, same thing with Wild, same thing with the brands that you've seen in the States. They're quality brands. That quality and consistency allows you to not have to deploy the crazy marketing budgets because you'll die. Yeah. You'll, you, 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 you can only sustain that for so long. So, so, you know, I'm a little biased, but I was talking to somebody at, you know, one of the industry companies <clears throat> and they actually are in the business of selling vapes in California, not Jetty. And, they mostly use jetty <laughs> it's kind of cool you know it's yeah uh, it's, it's 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 uh yeah it's, create a great brand and people people trust will buy. me I, I can't i can't name i can't name names but i've talked to bud tenders before at dispensaries in florida and they're like yeah well i work here but i smoke there yeah um and i'm like all right well it's personal <laughs> preference and obviously that is a uh that's a that's a big plus for for some of the brands but yeah i mean jetty's been around for i mean jetty's been around i think for as long as i've been in this industry yeah. Um, they've been around for a, for a long time. And if you can make it in California, you could make it anywhere um, in the States as far, as far as actually squeezing out a dollar in that market, especially when you calculate in the tax structure that they're forced to, uh, to operate in within that state. Yeah. Why am I drawing a blank? Dieter, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? The uh, CEO retired years ago from Mercedes. And BMW did a great ad on the day he went home. He actually pulled up his garage door and pulled out in a BMW. It was perfect. <laughs> oh, but, I don't remember know. his name, but I do remember the ad. That was such a great ad. Dude, uh, as far as Cusa goes, I know we Cusa was spotlight last time we had uh, we had, had you on. I mean, any update into Cusa as as we go into the end of the year, um, as far as progress or I guess footprint expansion goes? Yeah, I think we have. Um, you know, we have some some. Uh, we made some good progress with the WANA closing, uh, which we talked about. Yeah. I think um, we're we're uh, we're moving as quickly as we can to get acreage closed, and I'm hoping again that sooner than later. And then once that happens, we can put it. We can kind of you know, like all the pieces are sitting together. We just need to kind of snap them together, and you know we feel like we're getting pretty close to that. And you know hopefully we can talk about that over the next the next uh, you know weeks and uh, months. That's okay. encouraging. And then, we'll let, yeah, ahead, and, and then I guess. It, if I was going to say, if you had to, I guess, deliver a message to investors about this quarter, like how would you define it and what would you want them to be their key takeaways um, from it? I, I would I would want them to really think that, um, look, we're, we're, we're on track. And again, you see the you see the Canadian, uh, the, the, the canopy corporate numbers. And then they're also kind of the CUSA numbers. And, you know, at some point, as we've talked several times, we need to add those together. But 
But, you know, look, we, yeah. we even in the, you know, light of the, you know, uh, political things that took place last week where uh, we, we've yeah. built a business that can thrive in a full federal permissibility environment or, or not. Um, and in the meantime, for our core business, we're focused on driving, you know, large double digit growth numbers in the areas where we can be the most profitable. And we think that's how we create that sustainable business model. And, you know, I, I think I said this last time, but, you know, the, the canopies, uh, you know, share price is beaten up at the moment, um, as is the whole industry. If you believe in cannabis and you're, you're willing to like settle in for, for more than what happens in the next six months, then th this is the place to be because the opportunity is huge. It's just, as I said, nothing's going to unfold as fast as any of us in the industry would like to see it unfold. But in some ways, that's the exciting part about, uh, about being, you know, being in on the ground floor in an industry. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a, this is a process that takes a while, whether it, whether you're talking cannabis or crypto, like we're in the birth of yeah. these industries and they just, we just want them to happen overnight. And we just all need to realize it just takes yeah. a little longer and you got to get good I so mean, that you're here yeah. in the long run, which is really what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I, mean, I, know well, I know yourself included. We all thought that there'd be legalization in the United yeah. States come 2021 or yeah. shit, 2020. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a waiting game. It's a long game. And I mean, you just gotta be patient at this point. That's right. I'm just curious to see if Anthony will have as much gray hair as I do at 48. If we still don't have any kind of legalization, <laughs> if we're still here, that's perseverance. But look, yeah, I think there's a lot of people and we've had a lot of feedback from people online to see like who is going to be the next CEO of the company. And I know we're not asking for that name, but I think what people need to know and understand as well is like, what is your main objective? I know that you're going to be working the press release outline, a lot of stuff, but what is your main objective between now and March when you talk about the transition? I think a lot of people really want to understand. Yes, there's still some things that still have to close. There's a new CEO in place, but like to really, I don't want to say calm the storm, so, so to speak. It's just that there's concerns that people have and they want to know what the action plan is. So what is the main objective over these next four to five months? So, so literally, you know, I, I, I focus on two things, uh, you know, every single day. And those two things are delivering our plan for the year because, um, because we, you know, because we need to do that. And that, that says, we, you know, yeah. all the pieces are coming together in our core business and to get CUSA where we want it to be. So it's those two things. And whether it's me or another CEO, those will still be the two things. And and then when those two things are working really well, the third thing is where else can we go to drive this business organically or inorganically? So to me, it's and, and it's 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 easier for someone new coming in to think about the inorganic stuff because of the time horizon involved. But yeah. for right now, setting the stage by making sure the core business is operating really well. CUS is doing exactly what we needed to do. And then to understand the landscape uh, really well so that we can go on to that inorganic step is 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 the game right now. And it's what I would have been doing if I hadn't announced my retirement. It's exactly what I'm doing now that I have. And so, uh, yeah, it's business as usual. Anyway, listen, always great catching up with you. Appreciate, obviously, the update, among other things. Lots moving parts, but uh, great to see the international market growing. I understand, obviously, medical side with cannabis, but I, I like how you got in front of things and basically said, like, look, there's no excuses. This is where we are, but here's a strategy or plans as far as what we have moving forward. So always love catching up with you. Appreciate the feedback. Let's keep in touch. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, David. Thank you, David. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest podcast. What'd you all think? Is there any information that we're missing? Is there anything you want us to cover? As these industries heat up, we're getting access to more and more big hosts. So let us know the questions that you want us to ask for you. As usual, smash that like button. We want this to go viral. Click on that bell for all notifications for the latest interviews that we're doing. And as usual, let's build this community. Subscribe to our channel because we appreciate it. Because we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.